Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Richard Ford's novel, The Sports Writer. Talk very briefly about the author, give a spoiler-free plot overview, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I will be reading for next time. So Richard Ford is a novelist, a short story author. He's also uh, taught at various programs. Um, he wrote a, a novel, I believe, called Wildfire, which was made into a movie, which I have not seen, but I heard is very good. He's still best known for this book, The Sports Writer, which came out in the mid-'80s. It was one of the novels on Times 100 uh, novels of the last, I think it's 100 years. Uh, so it's fairly well uh, respected. Um, in the book is about a 38-year-old divorced dad who is a sports writer, and the book follows him for about six months of his life. Most of the book focuses on about a week around uh, Easter. Uh, I believe it's written contemporary uh, to when it was published, so this is kind of in the mid-'80s. Um, and so I thought just uh, from the things that I liked about it, I thought that was a very unusual character uh, to move a book forward with. Uh, the book is not plotless. There are things that happen in the book, but kind of uh, the character I felt was unique in that usually when you're talking about characters, uh, a 38-year-old recently divorced person uh, whose child has died, one of his children has passed away, and that kind of leads indirectly or directly to his divorce. And the book really just follows him during this week in his life as he kind of juggles friendships, a current girlfriend as well as his ex-wife and his children. Um, so that's basically the book, what it is. And I, I thought that that was interesting. I think that that was kind of a unique character or person. Usually in a book like this, uh, you'd be focused much more on the dissolution of the relationship or the death of a child. And this book basically takes that and moves it four years uh, from that point. And I think he does a good job of weaving in the character's backstory without making it uh, hitting you over the head. Uh, but he does kind of leave hints as to or explains what the character's life was like kind of before the events that were happening. I felt that there were some scenes that were genuinely moving. There's a scene where he goes out to visit a former football player that I thought was really well done. Uh, there's a scene at the uh, Easter dinner of his um, current girlfriend that I thought was really well done. I think the book ends relatively strongly. Uh, the dialogue is really well written. I think he d has an ear for having various characters speak the, the way that they would speak in those situations. It definitely doesn't feel like every character sounds the same or comes from the same place. So I thought that was really well done. He shifts narrative very efficiently. Like I said, the book is not told linearly. There basically starts in one place, goes back about a week prior, and then moves forward in the narrative. And I think he managed to juggle that very effectively. There's all throughout the novel, I think there's a lot of craft to look at and to emulate because I think he handles certain things really well. Some of the things that I liked a little bit less, the book is written in the mid 80s and it feels dated. There's a lot of uh, stereotypical views or views that we would view as stereotypes today that are in the book that I think would leave a bad taste in some people's mouths. Uh, there's a lot of slang and words that aren't really in use anymore uh, scattered throughout the book um, that I found kind of off-putting. Uh, but uh, it also has kind of a slow start to it uh, it takes probably about 100 pages for it to get going. I think it does improve as it goes along, but it definitely feels like a slog to get through that first 100 pages because I think in that part he's basically setting up the book and a lot of that stuff uh, I found kind of tedious is maybe too strong a word, but not particularly enjoyable. And finally, the last point that I would make on it is there were certain characters who spoke in dialect. So there's one character who is from the South and she speaks in a way he's kind of writes her character in the dialect and sometimes it's hard for her, for you to understand as a reader of what she's saying. And I felt that was annoying at times, but overall I found that I enjoyed the book. I was surprised that it got better as it went along. And I think there are some really emotional passages within it. I'd say the only other downside that I can think of, there's some plot points that I think are minor that are kind of come from left field. It's not far left field, but there's a, a couple points in the book where I kind of looked askew at some of the plot elements of it. But Overall, I enjoyed it. I think it deserves to be on the 100 best books of the the list that it made its way on. If you're fan, fans of Don DeLillo, if you're a fan of something like White Noise, or if you're a fan of the Rabbit Run series by John Updike, I think this is something to check out. Um, 
I think you'd enjoy this as well. So uh, I did enjoy uh, kind of the deep character dive of this guy who's not by any means a flawless character. He has a lot of things in his past that he's not uh, proud of and he realizes where he's kind of messed up. But he's also has a code of ethics and kind of follows his life as he's trying to kind of put it back together post-divorce. And I found that interesting. So uh, that's it for the sports writer. Next time I'm going to be reading uh, the uh, edit, excuse me, the essay uh, MFA versus NYC uh, edited by the writer of Art of Fielding. And uh, I hope to uh, see you then. Until next time, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and until next time, bye.